again and welcome to The Bride. This week's episode will be focusing on venues and what you might need to think about when selecting yours. I'm here at the beautiful fairy tale walled gardens at Newhall Estate, just south of Edinburgh. Although the Newhall Estate is a privately owned house, this is a great location for wedding venues. For the bridal party there are holiday cottages on site and it's only a short ride from Edinburgh to get the guests to and from the venue or back to a hotel. And that's one of our top tips when choosing a venue, ease of access. If you're getting ready somewhere else, you don't want to be stuck in a wedding car in all your finery for a long time, especially in a vintage style car with small seats. Having somewhere to calmly get ready before the ceremony is a real stress buster. Now let's go talk to the owner of Newhall Estate and talk weddings. Hello, I'm here with John Kennedy, who's the owner of the Newhall Estate, um, just outside of Edinburgh. So we're going to chat to them about the type of weddings that they have here. So, John, what type of weddings do you have at the Newhall Estate? Well, we've really got everything from humanists right through to the uh, weddings following a traditional service, and uh, our emphasis is very much on the garden location. We have a marquee set up in our two acre wall garden and it's very much a summer type of uh, uh, affair and we can provide all the things like the generator, the um, toilets and so on but we encourage the, um, the couples to arrange their own catering yeah. and um, wine and everything so that they organise all that which they, they prefer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and have you ever used the inside of the house before, or is that something you look to do in the future? We haven't yet, but um, as you saw, the dining room can accommodate um, 20 odd people, mm -hmm. and um, we are looking to use that and uh, more of the, the space to have either smaller weddings or corporate events. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, the dining room would be a bit for like a sort of smaller um, scale wedding. What about outside? Are they, what are the numbers for that? Anything this year, anything from about 80 to 160, and we could do more if they do put the marquee up okay. outside. Yeah. So that's, that's how they can increase the numbers. Yeah. Um, how long has, has it been used as a wedding venue? Well, we've had a couple of private weddings before, but this is the first year of proper operation okay. of doing it on a more commercial footing. Yeah, and everything's going well so far. Absolutely swimming <laughs> myself. So well, thanks very much for speaking to us. Okay, it's a pleasure. Thank you. In our second look at venues, we're looking at hotels. Now, hotels come in all shapes and sizes, but the one you choose will probably depend on the size of your wedding party and your budget. But there's a few things you should think about. Whether you're getting married elsewhere and having your reception at the hotel, or doing the whole thing there, hotel packages offer a great way of getting a lot of your wedding planning done in the one go with venue decor, drinks and catering included in a single price. There's usually still plenty of room to customise your wedding though, so you don't feel like part of a production line. Sometimes the basic packages are missing some key elements which you then have to arrange yourself, so make sure you know the real cost of the package you're looking for when comparing the venues. You may not want all the bells and whistles included in the more expensive packages, so our best advice is to shop carefully, compare like for like and know the package you're looking for at the end of the day. Hotels will sometimes offer a midweek deal. A lot of weddings take place at the weekend, so the hotel might benefit from having your wedding midweek. The downside to this would be that day guests may have to take time off work to attend the wedding, and evening guests may be less inclined to party into the small hours. But if you're a bride on a budget, this is a great way to save money and to whittle down the guest list to the people that really matter. If everything's happening inside the hotel, think about your photos. Are there nice spots outside to get some photos taken if the weather's nice? And if the weather's not so nice, does the hotel provide some nice interior spots for bridal shots and group photos? A honeymoon suite can be something to think about too. Having somewhere to go at the end of the night is really great and having somewhere to go when you just feel like you need a breather can be a real lifesaver. We are here at the Busby Hotel in Clarkston to see what a venue like this has to offer. Hi, we are here at the Busby Hotel in Clarkston to talk about using a hotel as your wedding venue. I'm going to be talking to Sarah Jane who is the bridal coordinator for the Busby. So what is the first question that the brides ask you when they contact you apart from having the date free? Well generally when a bride and groom get in touch with us they're looking to find out initially what packages that we do mm -hmm. um, to see if that sits in with the overall budget for the day. Right. Um, also um, wanting to know what kind of numbers that we can accommodate. Okay. Uh, we have two different function suites so it's good to know if it can fit into what uh -huh. their plans are for the day. Perfect. 
And what questions do you need to ask them? Well, obviously I want to know what their numbers are mm -hmm. um, because part of the planning process is to be able to give them an estimate to take away so that when right. they leave, they've got a good idea of exactly what it is that they're looking financially mm -hmm. at the hotel if they decide to come ahead and book with us. Okay, um, so just on that point, what would you say that the bride and groom need to be aware of or thinking about ahead of the day? Um, generally, the day as a whole, um, how it's all going to fit into it, if it's a particular season of the year that they're mm -hmm. getting married in, to start thinking about their, their schemes, their colour schemes, right. if it's a winter wedding, how much daylight they've got for, mm -hmm. for videos, for photography, um, yeah. and just really things um, like the whole planning process, mm -hmm. so have they got their celebrant book, do they know who they want to marry them? So right. are they going to go with a minister or yeah. a humanist celebrant um, or just a local registrar, so mm -hmm. things like that. And obviously to make sure that um, whoever they decide that they would like to go with, that they can have their, um, that they can have the date. Yeah, on the same day, that's helpful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in the honeymoon suite right now, which is very luxurious, it's got the hot tub and the private terrace. Yes. Do you find that this is a big selling point or do you find it's the package overall that sells it? I think um, at the hotel here it is a massive selling point, mm -hmm. um, however the package overall is ultimately what, what the couple are looking for. This is just the icing on the cake for right. them. Um, I think regardless where a couple wants to go, it's the service, the reputation mm -hmm. and, and ultimately the financial cost of a package yeah. that, that is massive. To then have something as fabulous as this mm -hmm. included as part of your package with no additional cost is great. Yeah, so absolutely. it's just the icing on the cake really yeah. for them. <laughs> uh, and a lot of brides um, and grooms these days want to sort of customise and personalise their wedding. Mm -hmm. Is that something you can accommodate? Definitely. And we yeah. would encourage that as right. far as possible. Um, when you're getting married, it's your day, it's all about you. Yeah. And everybody mm -hmm. wants to put their own stamp on it, more so mm -hmm. now than it ever has been before. Mm -hmm. And then the choice. Um, that's out there to let you do that is fantastic. Yeah. Um, a, a decent wedding coordinator at any venue will get excited about that with you and will <laughs> want to really get into um, okay. and to help you plan it, to give you suggestions. Right. Um, and we've got loads of experience doing this, so it's good to get ideas and hints and tips yeah. from your wedding What's coordinator What's worked in the past. Well. Things exactly. Like that. Yeah. Some things work with some venues and some things not so much, mm -hmm. um, so it's good to get different ideas yeah. and takes on it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and just to talk about timing, um, so obviously that's really important with yep. hotels and, and, and venues and things like that. Um, do you have any advice on how to sort of monitor the timing for things like the meal and the first dance and everything like that? Well, because we only ever do the one wedding per day here at the mm -hmm. hotel, then we'll be very flexible and work completely around the bride and groom for right. times. We will advise them as to what works best. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have to work in with any other couple's times or anything on the right, day. Okay. And I think that's something that's important to take into consideration yeah. when you're, you're looking at different venues and things. Mm -hmm. It's important to some people and not so much to others. Yeah. Um, but certainly with regards to timings, what we tend to find works quite well is a ceremony time of around about 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So it gives the, the bride plenty of time for getting organised yeah. in the morning, maybe yeah. some pre-bridal shots and things done. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's not too long for our guests to wait after the ceremony until dinner yeah. served. So yeah. um, that can be quite a, a big um, sort of factor when um, certainly when you're a guest attending a yeah. wedding, that kind of long spell in between. Want to be hungry. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, We'll generally look at maybe doing dinner service for about five o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, so that gives about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes for drinks reception before we start bringing people through. Right. Um, and it's at that point, once everyone's seated, that we start looking at doing speeches, mm -hmm. the official cake cutting, um, orders for dinner, and then we're into dinner service for about five o'clock. Right. Giving us a nice comfortable two hours for a nice relaxed dinner yeah. service before we turn the room around for night time. So evening guests we would always recommend for about 7.30, yeah. first dance, 8 o'clock and then right. get the party started. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well brilliant, thank you very much for You're speaking to welcome. us. Thank it's a pleasure, you. thanks for coming. Mm -hmm.